Thank you. Thank you. Can everybody hear me? All right, so that takes care of my intro. Um, I am an engineer at Google. I focus on developer relations, uh, specifically on web developer relations, encouraging a healthy web ecosystem, making sure that people are making fast websites, but also accessible, uh, secure, and discoverable. And in my prior role at YouTube, uh, I was there for four years, and I worked to help make YouTube fast. Uh, so I really like this new role that I'm in. I've been there for a year and a half um, in my new role. I really like this new role because now I'm encouraging the web to be just as fast as I try to do. Uh, we'll get into web page chess a little bit later, but um, I co-wrote that book with a few other power users. Um, and we're going to see how web page chess, among other tools, uh, can help us understand the performance of our websites and the web as a whole. So if we're going to be talking about web performance, first we need to address why it even matters. Why do we care if a website loads in five seconds as opposed to 10 seconds? Um, and the answer is really easy. It's just, it affects our user experiences. Um, when users have a faster experience, they're happier and they convert more. Whatever you want users to do on your website, if it's to sign up, to read your content, to buy things, they're going to do more yeah, of when you deliver a faster experience. This website, WPOStats.com, is full of case studies of businesses improving performance and seeing positive results. Engagement going up, conversions, sign-ups, ad revenue. These, are, these things are all correlated with web performance. WPO standing for Web Performance Optimization. So for example, Pinterest improved performance by 40% and they saw a 15% increase in their SEO traffic and conversion rate to sign up. WPO Stats is full of case studies just like this of companies A-B testing performance and measuring the results. Um, and I highly encourage you, if you're going to do performance testing on your own websites and you see similar improvements, or even if you don't see an improvement in performance, goes up, but conversions go down, post your results to this website. It's a wiki format. Anybody could submit their content. Um, so bottom line is users like fast websites. Google also made this tool where if you haven't improved performance yet, you can kind of get an estimation of what type of return you can see. This is called the Revenue Impact Calculator. You plug in a few different variables about how your website um, performs in terms of how many users access the website, what your conversion value is, the dollar amount, and what your conversion rate is. And it will kind of guess, if it could, what your performance is. And I can tell you a little bit later about how it guesses your performance. And it will give you a dollar amount. If you were to improve performance by, let's say, half a second, in this hypothetical example, example.com, you can see over $100,000 in uh, conversion. Revenue. But it's not just a dollar amount, we can also see it in search. The Google Webmaster Central blog in January wrote that they're going to be rolling out a change called the speed update, where page speed is going to become a ranking factor in search results for mobile. And if you read further down, they say it affects only the slowest websites. There will be a demotion for the slowest websites as opposed to a promotion for fast websites. So this is a big deal. A website will appear or may appear lower in search results if it's slower, all other things being equal. If that's not a big enough incentive, um, if you remember AMP on search, there's this carousel of news results. And before that was limited to only AMP pages, AMP being uh, Google's accelerated mobile pages uh, framework uh, that ensures speedy delivery of web pages. And Malta Ubel, the tech lead of AMP, a few months ago said that they're looking into changing the requirements for this carousel to be not just AMP pages, but objectively fast pages. And you'll see that he mentions the Chrome user experience report as one of the tools that we can use to measure objectively fast websites. And I'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, so these are all things that happen when the website is fast, but what happens when the website is slow? 
60% of mobile connections worldwide are 2G speed. That's really important. 60% are 2G. And do you remember what 2G was like on your phone? No, not ago? even. So it doesn't help the case that the median web page is about 1.3 megabytes on mobile. So over 2G, which is, I don't have the speaker notes in front of me, but like, I think that's 70 megabits per second. So if you do the math, 1.3 megabytes at 2G speeds would load in over two minutes. This is the median web page. So half of them are slower than that. Fifty-three percent of users abandon sites that take longer than three seconds to load. We also have data about how fast or slow web pages load, and on mobile, it's 3.1 seconds. Up. So 51 percent of mobile page load experiences are greater than three seconds. And if half of the users abandon a website that loads slower than three seconds, and half of the experiences are slower than three seconds, do the math. I think a quarter of our users are abandoning websites on there. So this is a big deal. And if users abandon your site, they're not reading your content or clicking your conversion button mass or seeing your ads. Uh, so this is a big deal. And when we look at web performance, this golden rule by pioneered by Steve Souders, he's kind of the godfather of web performance measurement. Steve says 80% of the response time is on the front end, as opposed to time spent waiting for the back end to serve the web page. So when we're looking for areas to improve web performance, front end is usually where we're going to be spending our time. Okay, so hopefully you all care about web performance now. Now how do we measure it? To help answer that, I have this grid of tools. Um, on the left side, we have what we call lab tools, or synthetic, as it's also known. And on the right side, the right column, field tools. The field tools measure the user experience. These are real users um, being measured. The top half are kind of personal tools. These measure our own websites, or one website at a time. The bottom half, these are our tools as a community. These help us, these are almost like public utilities that tell us how the web as a whole is performing. When we combine lab and field and personal and public, you get interesting data. So lab or synthetic tools analyze how a web page is built. It'll tell us if a web page is built on WordPress. How many bytes does it load? Does it use a CDN? Are the images optimized? It can tell us everything about how opt optimizations uh, should be done. Field data represents the real user experiences. Are the users on desktop or mobile, Wi-Fi, 3G, or 2G, <coughs> offline? Was the web page load experience fast or slow? And which pages were viewed? What was the user journey like? Did they enter on one page and leave on another? Did they leave on that entry page? Did they interact with certain UI on the page? There are a few personal tools that can tell us about particular websites. If you've used Chrome in web development, you're familiar with Chrome developer tools. Web page test uh, is probably the premier web performance testing tool. Google Analytics, most of you are familiar with. Public tools tell us about the state of the web as a whole. Uh, and I'll get into each of these later. So I want to make this, this is a workshop, so this is supposed to be very interactive. I hope I'm not talking for most of it. Um, and we can all kind of collaborate. So instead of just telling you about web page tests, let's exit the slides and look at it. So I can make this a little bigger. Does anybody have a website that they would like to audit in web page tests? Let's republic. Can you spell it? N-E-T-S republic.com. That's the public, okay. So on this simple testing tab, easy slash easy.php, um, it gives us the fewest amount of configuration options. So it's really, really simple to set up. Uh, the only things you need to decide are do we want the connection to be slow 3G? So let's leave it there. It'll appear a little bit slower. 
Um, it's important to click this Lighthouse Audit tab. This is um, going to give us these optimizations. I'll leave this on track for so we'll start our test. Do the capture. See, I know it's annoying. Don't think now. And now we will. So this is your website, Next Republic? My client site. Your client site. Do you actively optimize performance? Yes. Right now it goes to Cloudflare. Okay. Both. So you use Cloud. Great. All right. So we'll see what we can identify for performance here. Um, when I talk about web performance tools, there's two categories. And this speaks to the lab versus field. First, we want to know how fast is our website. And secondly, how do we make it faster? We'll see on web page tests, it will give us performance timings. It'll say your website loaded in 9.5 seconds. You may be tempted to look at that and say, wow, my website is really slow. It's 9.5 seconds. But that doesn't necessarily represent the user experience. This is just one test from one location over one connection type when really the user experience is a very diverse uh, distribution of experiences. So resist the temptation to read too much into um, the results. So this is taking quite a while. So I, I'm curious if this is going to be a slow page load. If it is, that's more that we can look at for performance up. Exactly. How quickly you do run? It should be um, less than a minute. We can also look at all of the tests being run on web page tests. By default, they're private, but for anybody who makes it public, we can see their results. Someone has another website. Okay. Um, I mean, if you want to abandon that one. I'll let it go. Then we'll do another test. Okay. Open another. What's the website? It's suburbanforagers.com. Okay. So I'll start that one. Did you build this? Yeah. Right, so we have um, one of the public tests is already done. I'll go back to the others so we can see. So this is what it looks like on web page tests. Uh, at the top, it gives you suggestions or things that you should be doing. Um, these are the most inexcusable performance optimizations. Everybody should be doing these things. If you're getting a D or anything in red, then you know it, it requires your attention. Um, so in this case, first byte time. This is actually the back-end performance. Um, we could see just from like this bird's eye view of uh, resources being loaded, this is the first request. And it's taking a noticeable amount of time, so a second. So this is one second that the user cannot see anything on the page. Nothing has, um, it, it's just a plain white, white screen. Um, but um, keep alive enabled. This is a back end configuration. So as we request resources on the page, does the browser need to open a connection to the server every single time a request is made? Keep alive enables the browser or the client to reuse open connections. Uh, and this shows up in uh, this waterfall chart as an orange bar. So right now we can see that there are a few orange bars, but not one for every connection, which is great. Let's check on the time. So we are breaking for lunch at 12 o'clock. So we have 15 minutes. Um, I want to make sure that we have enough time to get through. So this is Suburban Foragers. And I can tell you just from at, at a glance, there are things popping out color-wise here. Um, the waterfall will highlight in yellow, things like redirects. Uh, this is where, let's say you hit example.com, and that redirects to www.example.com, which may then redirect to https www.example.com. This chain of requests is bad for the user because they just want the content. They don't want to know how to get there. So if you as the website can just tell the user the canonical URL, then that will cut out this middleman on all these redirects, and they can just get what they wanted to have immediately. In red, these are bad requests for broken, broken links, you can think. Um, so if there's an image that can't load, it'll show up in red here. So we can dig in and see exactly what the problems are. So broken images. 
There's quite a few of them. So these, these wouldn't even appear on the page. And you can see that there's still a cost. Um, so x-axis here is time. So you can see this is a pretty, it takes a minute to load. This one is still loading after five minutes. We'll come back to it. Actually, there's the first one. All right. Um, because the x axis, x axis is time, I can tell right now that images in purple are taking a very long time. So about a minute to load an image over 3G. Slow 3G. Um, and the size of these images uh, bytes in not that big. So there, there seems to be a server issue. On this page because um, the lighter shade is the back end time to respond to the request. The darker shade is just the time to download the request. So it's pretty small, 70K. But maybe this is on a shared post where it's busy responding to other requests. Um, and it looks like there's a significant problem with uh, response times. So okay. do you need to call your server hosting in order to fix this? Is that what? Do, do you need to talk to your host to fix this problem? Yes. You would need to show them results like this. Um, and they actually really like to see results like this because it's reproducible. They can see logs of exactly what happened. Um, and these URLs are shareable. So they're like a permalink. So um, it's definitely a problem for the host to fix this. This in particular is a back-end issue. Um, Front-end issues that I could see, just looking at the resource type, JS, 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 lots of JavaScript. Um, we can actually count, um, actually the test isn't done yet, so it won't tell us. But for example, content breakdown. This will tell us how many of each type of request and how big they are. So this is a megabyte of JavaScript, and right now we're back on suburban forages.com. JavaScript should be minimal, and on WordPress websites, WordPress sites don't need to do much. Maybe you have a carousel, that's the most common thing that I see. Um, WordPress sites ship with jQuery, um, which is pretty compact when um, gzipped and minified. But one problem that I see on WordPress sites is people just throwing a plugin at every problem that they see. Um, carousels are the first to come to mind, but they're actually one of the most common things that surprisingly users don't even interact with. They, they see it, they don't slide around, they just scroll right past it. So if you have a designer or the customer that's working with you suggesting let's put a carousel on the page or a slider, push back a little bit. Um, I'm jumping around, but one of my like takeaway slides at the end is create a culture of performance where you work. Always push back and say, how fast will this be? How slow will this be if I implement it? Um, and if it hurts the user experience, is it worth it? In many cases, the answer is no. Um, so performance is another part of the user experience, and if you slow it down, then users are frustrated. Whether or not they can slide around a carousel won't really matter. Um, so I do want to get to some other tools, and we have about 10 minutes left. Um, so Google Analytics, there's not much to say here. If you have it, you can find out how fast users are experiencing your site. One complaint I have about GA is it tells you the average page load time. And like I said, performance is a distribution. And it happens that when you take a uh, when you take the average of a distribution, it's not representative. The average, it, there's a say, or an old adage or anecdote of Bill Gates walks into a bar. The average income in the bar before Bill Gates walks in is some normal amount. <laughs> Bill Gates walks in, now the average income is in the billions. It's not representative of the bar as a whole. On the other hand, if you take the median of income at the bar, it doesn't change when one person comes in. So that's my complaint about Google Analytics. You're looking at averages. So if somebody had like a four minute page load time, it's good. you're gonna see that spike in your, in your average graph. Um, I do know for a fact that they're changing this and it's gonna get much better soon. Um, so Google Analytics will tell you how fast your website is. Web page test will tell you how to make it faster. Um, I have a few other <coughs> tools I'd like to show you. HTTP Archive. This is a tool that tells us that the median web page is one and a half, or 1.3 megabytes. 
The graph is actually interesting because it shows you how it changes over time. This tool has been operating for about eight years, and the lines are showing you how that median has changed. And it's growing. Um, and these red numbers are telling you by how much. 220% on desktop, 778% on mobile. The lines are converging, which is kind of frightening because mobile users are paying for their data. They're on slow connections because they're not on, they might be out uh, and connected to cell towers. Um, and their data could be capped as well. So it's especially important that we ship more lightweight experiences to mobile users. Um, and this graph is telling us that we're not really doing that. We're almost shipping the same experience to desktop and mobile users. Another fun thing, I actually have to present, I can figure. Another fun thing about the HTTP archive is that people use it to identify interesting trends, like when the average web page exceeded the size of the game Doom, if you remember that. Um, Doom was 2.39 megabytes, but the average web page um, was exceeding 2.3 megabytes at the time. And somebody made a predict prediction, if you um, plot that trajectory, you can see when exactly it'll, it'll exceed it. This happened in 2015, and like I said, averages are kind of misleading, so we have subsequently changed over medians, and I think we're still below doom, but that doesn't help the case. Um, I'll skip this. Um, the Chrome user experience report is... Uh, one of these field tools that enables us to understand the web, but the real user performance of the web. Um, so for example, you can plug a website into here and see what your user distribution looks like. Green is fast, orange is average, red is slow. You can see how, what percent of your users are experiencing fast, in this case, first contentful paint. The first contentful paint being, I actually have a slide for that too, um, something useful being displayed on the screen. A paint is just something. Your background color changed. The user is not going to be like, aha, the background color changed. I'm happy now. No, they want to read content. They want to see that something's happening. Um, DOM content loaded is more about the HTML rendering on the page. And onload is when all the images have loaded. You may be tempted to think that onload is the great metric because that's when the page is loaded. But if you do things like lazy loaded or deferring resources, then onload is going to be much faster and not necessarily representative of user experience. We've also added this experimental metric, first input delay. So everybody's experienced this where you're on a website, you see a button, you press it or you tap it, and nothing happens. And you wait, maybe you tap it again, and nothing happens. And maybe a second later, the modal opens up or it does something, and that's a really frustrating experience. And first input delay is measuring the first time you try to interact with the page, how long did it take for the page to respond? Um, and this is a really good indicator of having too much JavaScript. Uh, the Chrome user, Chrome user Experience Report will um, report the distribution of what we call FID on your website. Um, and the cool thing is that it's completely open. So you can see across 4 million websites, I'll jump to does anybody have a website that has maybe medium-sized, a lot of small websites um, maybe are too small. Um, and by medium-sized, like you get visitors in the thousands per month, maybe? Does anybody have a website that big? Smaller. How do you know they're not robots? Sorry? How do you know they're not robots? The users? Yeah. Google Analytics. <laughs> Uh, a robot generally doesn't interact with the page, so that would be a good indicator of um, the user agent also. Uh, Google Bot has its own user agent to identify that it's a, it's a robot. Sure. <coughs> French women don't get fat up. PageSpeed is unavailable there. So I'm using PageSpeed Insights just as a quick test. What does it exist? Um, what if, so it might be too small. Well, I can show you something I know is in here. Developers. 
it's possible um, there are a few other um, caveats to how. Ugly saloon. Saloon. I know I work at Google. It's still fancy. <laughs> no, there's one out. There should be two. saloon. There is a saloon. Oh, I have no idea. Now, two O's and one L. I was saying, I was saying you know saloon, but yeah, we do have data. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. So on PageSpeed Insights, um, you can plug in a URL and it will show you not just how fast the website is as experienced by real users, it'll tell you how to improve performance. Yes. Um, so things like, you need to reduce your server response time. It doesn't necessarily tell you how to improve your server response time because that differs by host and what exactly is going on. But more actionable things like, you're loading too much JavaScript or you have too much CSS. And it'll tell you exactly what it is. You can see a lot of jQuery, a lot of jQuery plugins. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Redirects, we talked about those. Those are the yellow bars on web page test. This is actually a good redirect. So this is from HTTPS, uh, or it's actually just going to www. Um, so what I want to focus on is this. Um, these colors here represent some user experience. Um, the URL for this is g.co slash chrome ux that. I don't know if I can make that video, but this is one of my textbook. <clears throat> g.co slash chrome ux dash. This will take you to uh, Data Studio. And you can create a dashboard that's totally public. Um, anybody could use it, and you can share it. You can embed it on your website. And you can see, see two minutes left, um, how your user experience has changed over time. Right now we have first content full paint, but we're going to be adding it, tons of metrics here. Um, another really cool thing about this is the breakdown of whether your users are on phone or desktop, um, 4G, 3G, 2G. In this case, hardly anybody 2G is accessing this website. Um, and that's kind of at odds with the stat earlier. 60% of users, mobile users worldwide are on 2G. Um, keep in mind, those users are probably not on the web yet. They're probably using native apps. Um, they might not be using Chrome, which this pulls its data from. So um, keep, keep these in mind. But um, you could see exactly how users are accessing your website. And the key thing here is not only your website, but your competitors. If you have a direct competitor that's also large enough to be in this data set, how do you stack up? Do you have similar user demographics, connection, and device spec wise? And if so, what does your performance distri distribution look like? Um, in this case, 38% of users experience fast first content opening, fast being less than one second. One second is really like what we try to aim for. Obviously, zero seconds is the holy grail, but we're far from that. Um, in the final minute. What is average? Average is between one and three seconds. And slow is anything beyond three seconds. Um, I'm going to jump ahead to what we can do to improve performance. Um, we need to monitor it. There's um, an acronym. I know there's so many acronyms in, in web development. This one is MOM. Measure, optimize, and monitor. So once you measure your web performance, you work to optimize it. And then you have to continuously monitor it to ensure that you're not getting slower, you're not regressing. Um, tools like uh, web page test, Google Analytics, these will tell you how uh, your website is performing and how to improve it. Celebrate performance. I mentioned this earlier. Create a culture of performance. Push back whenever somebody says, hey, I've got a great idea for uh, user experience. Let's put in another carousel or something. Hey, how fast is that going to be, really? And Make performance another part of the user experience. Publish your case studies if you do improve your performance. 
praise good examples of performance in public. Um, I, I say in public here because sometimes uh, we, we have a win in performance, we improve um, the user experience, and this kind of goes unnoticed. Um, this is great from the top down. So if you can correlate web performance, think back to that revenue impact calculator. If you can correlate performance with revenue, then you have a very good reason for your CEO or whoever's calling the shots to care about improving performance and making more money for the company. Um, and something that I've seen being very helpful is making a little dashboard for everybody to keep an eye on the web performance and just show that at all times in the office. Or if you work by yourself, having just a web page that you visit periodically and track the performance. You want to see that performance improving over time. Incentivizing developers, and this goes along with the next one, working with developers, um, the developers being all of you, um, from my end, as a developer relations engineer, we need to make it easier to make fast websites. It needs to be hard. You have to try to make your website slow. It's too easy right now to throw another plugin on and not know that that plugin not only degrades performance, but is wildly unpopular with users. Um, so we need to do a better job of identifying uh, these well-lit paths to performance, creating good documentation of how to improve performance, what are the plugins and themes that are fast, and one of the projects that I'm working on is to try to take as many of the WordPress themes and plugins as possible and running them through tools like this, like WebPageTest and PageSpeed Insights, to understand objectively how fast are these plugins and themes. Which are the ones that slow down the user experience? And let's tell developers when they install them what the cost is going to be. Not just dollar cost, um, or how many stars it has, but how is this actually going to affect the user experience? Are you going to be posting as results somewhere? Yes, definitely. Any idea We're not going to keep that for ourselves. Yeah, any idea where that might be? Uh, there will be probably a blog with WordPress and um, on the Google Developers blog. Um, the last thing is performance is just one part of the user experience. Like I mentioned earlier, there's so much more to the experience. People tend to focus too much on design as the user experience. If it looks good, if the colors are popping and the pictures, if the images are high resolution, that's great user experience. But it's more than that. Is the website accessible? Can people even use it? And along those lines, is it fast? If they're going to be abandoning, it doesn't matter how high quality your images are. So here's the one pager. Um, HTTP Archive has a WordPress lens where we have a bunch of stats about WordPress specifically. You can access that, access that at wordpress.httparchive.org. The Chrome user experience report, here's a link to the documentation. Um, also, my contact information is on the left side. If you want to reach out to me for any reason, I also have business cards if you'd like. Um, reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, so that's it. Thank you.